One of the best things about being a student is summer vacation. Regardless of class standing, one thing students can agree on is the refreshing feeling that summer brings. Summer vacation is a perfect time to recharge and relax, but how do you make the most of it? Just like older adults who retire from their jobs, students with too much free time on their hands often get bored after a few weeks of vacation. Here are six tips for making the most of your summer vacation. One is to find a part-time job. Now, although the idea of working over the summer probably isn't the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of summer vacation, hear me out. A part-time job will give you spending money for the summer, help you save money for when you go back to school in the fall, teach you discipline, give you something to do, and give you real-world experience. Simply finding a job that you can work 10 to 20 hours a week will be sufficient in giving you extra income and give valuable work skills. Even if you only take a part-time job as a cashier or bus at a restaurant, you will learn important communication skills and build your work ethic. In fact, must be a strong communicator is the most commonly listed job requirement by employers, whether it's entry level, mid-career, or senior positions. No matter what career field you are planning on going into, employers want strong communicators. The best short-term reward for having a summer job is having some extra spending money. This income can be spent on activities you enjoy like going out to eat, video games, or activities with friends. You could also start paying off accrued interest from your student loans, but this is far less exciting. Although it might be tempting to spend your whole paycheck as soon as you get it, I strongly suggest you don't do this. Use this time when you have less income to develop good spending habits. Design a budget that you can follow and live below your means. Many adults spend more than they make and have poor spending habits because they did not practice the proper behaviors when they were younger when they were earning less money. Design a budget, stick to it, set aside 10% to treat yourself and 10% for long-term savings. Tip number two is to try and find a summer internship. Internships are one of the best ways to spend the summer because of the real world experience you receive. Similar to a part-time job, a summer internship will develop discipline, teach you how to work with others, and improve your work ethic. Internships are great because they show you what your future career will be like and if you actually will like it. Not only will you get the experience, but you'll see firsthand what coworkers are doing, which is like a glimpse into your future career if you were to work for that company. In addition, you might even be paid, which is really cool because you are being paid to learn a job. Since a lot of people watching this are considering engineering, I can say as an engineer, I never heard of anyone getting an engineering internship that was not paid. But this is not to say that every single one is. My engineering internship involved a summer long project in which I worked full time, then presented what I made at the end of the summer. Typically, you'll hear of engineering students getting paid between 15 to 20 an hour for a summer internship. And like I said in another video, the average engineering internship in the US pays $16 an hour. My internship was challenging but very rewarding and it helped give me a very clear idea of what I wanted to do. Lastly, if the company you intern with really likes you, then they will likely hire you for the following summer and eventually for a full-time position. Overall, a summer internship will teach you new skills, give you hands-on career experience, and could lead to a full-time job with that company. And as a bonus tip for those in college, once you start your new school year, start looking for internships within the first few months. When I started applying for internships in December usually, I was talking to some people who already got offers because they went to career fairs and applied in around October. This won't guarantee you'll get hired, of course, but I quickly learned to start looking as early as you can because you never know when some companies might put out job listings. And additionally, of all the internships I applied to, maybe around 10 to 20% ever responded to me. Some even sent me a rejection email the next year after I applied. So if you don't hear back from some companies, don't worry, you're not alone. Many companies are just slow or really bad at getting back to people. Tip number three is to take summer classes. If you decide to not get an internship, you should at least take a part-time summer job or take summer school or both. Taking summer classes is a great way to knock out general education units, which will be helpful for those quarters or semesters that might require you to take a heavier schedule. Some people may try to use summer school to graduate early, but this is more difficult to do unless you put in much more effort. Generally, I just recommend using summer school to make some of your future semesters or quarters easier on yourself. I took three summer classes throughout college and I didn't graduate any earlier, but I was able to focus on my engineering courses in my later years without having to do English papers or anything like that. And I definitely thank myself for it. Tip number four is reading. A great way to keep your brain active and expand your mind is by reading. I can almost guarantee you do very little reading for recreation when you are in school because you have so much more other work you need to get done. 
Personally, I never read for recreation. The only times I read was for English class. But now I do, and if I could go back, I would have started earlier. You can read whatever you are interested in, whether it's sci-fi or thriller books, but personally, I recommend nonfiction to help you learn and improve upon yourself. So for those in engineering, pick up Elon Musk's biography by Ashley Vance. This book will help you see where he came from, his mindset, and will give you an inside view on how he tackles problems and makes decisions. Or you could learn about Steve Jobs, or how Jeff Bezos built Amazon. For those interested in math and physics, there's biographies on Einstein or Stephen Hawking's book. There's a lot of great self-help books that will teach you about goal setting, getting over fear, having a career plan. There's also books on the psychology behind success and what extremely successful people do differently, and so much more. Basically, if there's a person or industry that you are really interested in, or a part of your life you want to improve on, you can find a book on it, and trust me, you will learn a lot. Here are some books I have read and highly recommend. These are some books on the life stories and ideas from very successful people. And the best part is their information is not locked up in a secret vault, they are offered on Amazon for like $10-$15. to $15. I've included the links to these books in the description, and these are associate links, so if you purchase through them, it does help support the channel. Set a goal for yourself to read one book every maybe three to four weeks, and watch how your creative thought process and vocabulary slowly begins to improve. And this isn't school where you have to write an essay on the book. If you don't enjoy it, forget it and move on to the next one. If that's too much of a commitment, start by reading just 10 pages a day, and what you most likely will notice is that you will begin to enjoy reading for recreation more and more. Reading will improve your vocabulary, refine the way you think, expand your knowledge, and give you perspective on the world. Tip number five is to stay active. Whether it's a pickup basketball game or a simple hike with your friends, it's important to stay active during the summer. With so many ways to stay active, all you need to do is pick up your favorite activity and do that. The summer is a perfect time to go to the community pool or start a new exercise program with a friend. The most important part is that you engage in some sort of physical activity as much as possible over the summer. By going outside at least 20 minutes a day, you will experience a slight mood lift, feel like you have more energy, and overall enjoy your summer more. Becoming the best version of yourself is about consistently improving or implementing new habits and behaviors, and staying active is no exception. And the last tip is to hang out with friends and travel. The summer is often the student's favorite time of the year because it is a time they are free from school responsibilities. This will largely depend on your budget, but see if you can plan a few small trips with your friends. You really never hear someone say they regretted taking a vacation, whether it's a big or small one. The best way to spend your money is by investing it into experiences. Instead of spending your money on physical items, plan a few small trips with your friends over the summer. Part of the excitement that comes out of traveling is the planning and anticipation for an upcoming trip. You can also experience places you may want to live after school, which can be hard to know until you've been there. And remember, for most of you, once college is over, your summer breaks are a thing of the past. You'll start with maybe a two or three week vacation allowed per year at your job, and you'll slowly work up from there. But three months off does not come up again, unless you maybe become a teacher, for example. So in conclusion, it's important that you enjoy your summer, relax, but try to be productive a little, whether it's working or reading and so on. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.